Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Since the US chip ban took effect, a technological cold war between China and the US has officially begun. To better suppress China's semiconductor industry, in addition to demanding that U.S. tech giants tighten exports and trade with China, the U.S. has also extended its reach to neighboring and allied countries. In the field of chip manufacturing equipment, it has formed a small team, or alliance, with the Netherlands and Japan to strengthen the blockade and restrictions on the Chinese market. As early as the beginning of 2023, the US, Japan, and the Netherlands signed an agreement to jointly decide to stop supplying deep ultraviolet lithography machines to China. Based on this, Although Chinese tech companies had already placed orders with Dutch company ASML, Japanese companies Nikon and Canon, deliveries were delayed and ultimately halted, significantly hindering the development of China's chip industry. However, those familiar with the U.S. know that although the U.S. has led the establishment of many alliances, most of these alliances are not very solid, often forged through hegemonic pressure. Such unequal alliances are destined to be short-lived, with many potential contradictions and conflicts. Take the US and Japan as examples. As early as the 1980s, Japan was already a globally renowned semiconductor powerhouse. Even the US had to learn from Japan. However, in an attempt to steal Japan's thunder, the US spearheaded a US-Japan semiconductor agreement requiring Japan to sign it. The main content of this agreement was that Japan would share technology with the US. This was tantamount to outright theft. Furthermore, after seizing Japanese semiconductor technology, the US formed the Extreme Ultraviolet Consortium. Interestingly, this time the U.S. focused its support on the Dutch company ASML, excluding Japanese companies like Nikon and Canon. This use-and-discard approach is very typical of the U.S. Japan became the biggest victim of this farce. Perhaps these historical experiences have made Japan wiser. Even while maintaining a friendly alliance with the U.S. on the surface, it still has its own calculations deep down. More than two years after the U.S. chip ban was implemented, Japan began to ignore it and continued to supply chip manufacturing equipment to the Chinese market. After all, such temporary bans inevitably have loopholes, and with careful searching, there are always opportunities to exploit them. Therefore, in recent years, ASML of the Netherlands has reduced its exports of lithography equipment to China, while Nikon of Japan has launched several new lithography machine models and directly exported them to the Chinese market, 
including Nikon's lithography machines and Dongjing Electronics coating and developing equipment. Of course, unlike ASML, Japan's chip manufacturing equipment is less dependent on U.S. parts. Thanks to years of deep cultivation and technological accumulation, Japan has long established its own independent supply chain, something ASML cannot match. Furthermore, Canon of Japan is pursuing a nanoimprint lithography route, directly bypassing the restricted, extreme ultraviolet EUV technology which provides new ideas for China's independent development of lithography equipment. In addition, facing the pressure of the U.S. chip ban, Chinese technology companies have not been idle, but have become even more determined to embark on the path of independent research and development. Although this path is difficult, requires high investment, and has a long cycle, many companies have persevered and made their own contributions. Currently, Shanghai Microelectronics has achieved mass production of 90 nanometers lithography machines and 28 nanometers is also being accelerated. Everything is developing in a positive direction. The U.S., in alliance with the Netherlands and Japan, attempted to blockade China's chip industry, but history has proven that hegemonic alliances eventually crumble. Japan has already begun exporting equipment to China and China is accelerating its independent research and development. Only by mastering core technologies can we escape the predicament of being controlled by others. Facts have proven that only by holding core technologies in our own hands can we possess absolute autonomy and a voice in the market. Whether it's the Dutch company ASML or the Japanese companies Nikon and Canon, as long as they use other people's technology or core components, they are subject to their whims. Therefore, China's chip industry must be self-reliant and strong. There are no shortcuts.